can Christ be present or inside of a gay marriage? Yes. Yes. <laughs> My man Marcus back there chilling. <laughs> Yo, Marcus, I need you to come to the mic real quick. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm be real. It just sounds like we got a retrobate mind. If we're not going to go by God's word, and we, because essentially what y'all saying is, I'm going by my feelings. What I, no, but, what I, the Bible says, you're a new creature when you come into Christ. I die to myself. I take up my cross. I go against those feelings. You're not, you haven't justified it with the word of God. You say you've studied science and you've studied biology. You've studied all this stuff. God is the final authority on everything. So it just sounds like you're going to do what you want to do and you're justifying, you know, why you feel the way that you feel. And as I said, the Bible says there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end of that way is death. I have to bring my mind under subjection with the word of God, which is the final authority. So this conversation is really not going to go anywhere if the word of God is not going to be the final authority. You mean your interpretation of your your scriptures? That's That's what you're saying. you 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 can say that, like, that's fine. We're going to, you know, there's people can justify uh, whatever lifestyle they want to do by twisting scripture and everything like that. But it's clear. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, see, let me let me I want to say this, because, again, I've, I've been in ministry for 30 years and um, I un- well, I don't want to say unfortunately, but in many, many instances, I have had conversations with people who are from uh, the fundamentalist camp who basically. Uh, do what's called a, a a surface reading or a plain reading of the text and who are not interested at all in going deeper into that text. Uh, they read the words on the page. They say that is the word of God. And then they use that as a standard or a bellwether uh, to not only try to live their lives, but to apply that to other people's lives. And again, I think that is dangerous. When we get to the place where we are not willing, first of all, to listen to other people's lived experiences. Because I want to make sure that you understand, I know that I'm a Christian. I'm clear about that. I want you to understand that. And see, you're, you're, you're shaking your head. And see, based upon your opinion is why you're shaking your head. But the truth is, is that none of us get to speak specifically to somebody else's connection with God. We don't have that right. Okay? And so... When we run into these fundamentalist perspectives about scripture, it is because it comes, again, from a conceited uh, supremacist perspective. And what we've got to do if we are ever going to get to the place where there is unity amongst the saints is we've got to respect each other's lived experiences, my brother. You know, And, and again, you're shaking your head. I'm trying to hear you. But it's like you got a force field. Of, you're not even trying to hear two Call people. Truth. You're sitting here talking to two people with master's degrees. Mine is in theology. Brother Ramel's is in divinity. We've Ain't got the Bible, man. Mastery. Okay. And it's because we've taken time to try to understand this. But if you're at a place where your mind is close to it, it's almost like the conversation is pointless because we are going in circles. And so I believe we were brought to this platform so that we could have conversations about these scriptures, so that we could try and hear one another, uh, and not that we could take a supremacist position over one another. And so I want to say to you, I came here with every intention of respecting you, and, and, I, and I do. As a man, as a, as a brother in the ministry, I do respect you. But one of the things that I want to make sure that you do as well is hear that it is possible that there are people who have lived experiences that are not like yours, that are just as valid as yours. You got to hear that. The Bible says the carnal man cannot receive the thing, the things of God. They're foolishness to him. So you're talking about master's degrees. A lot of times tonight, you guys are talking about feelings, what you identify, what you think. And so, you know what I'm saying? That That's carnality. That's going off feelings. That's going off emotion. That's why I say, where do we draw the line? If I feel, if I feel like, man, I'm in the wrong body. I need to chop off my penis. That doesn't make it right. Yeah. I want to challenge. Study, my brother. That's all I want to do is just challenge you to study. And let, let me offer that uh, all of these patents, there are so many passages that you referenced that I could easily have thrown out at you. Because I could easily say, 
if you think that being gay is a sin, that is so that is carnal minded because you are opening up the Bible and reading it at face value. You are not studying it. You are not going to the Greek. You are not going to the Hebrew. You are not considering the context. You are twisting Jesus's words when he wasn't even talking about marriage and divorce. That is so natural thinking. That is so carnal. That is so surface level. I could easily throw out all of those accusations, but at the end of the day, they're meaningless because I'm just taking these texts and 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 using them in order to uh, uh, gin up some kind of confidence in the position that I'm putting forward. When those same texts can be used to try to justify pretty much any position. If you want to have a conversation about homosexuality, then let's actually look at them scriptures that actually seem to be seem to be addressing the issue of homosexuality. But to go to First Corinthians two and talk about the mind of Christ. Anybody can say that the mind of Christ aligns with their particular interpretation. And that's where that whole idea of arrogant, theological arrogance comes in. The idea that my interpretation is the right interpretation. And I, again, I, I asked you this question rhetorically earlier, but I almost want to ask you uh, literally, do you, do you believe right now things that you didn't believe five years ago? Were you reprobate then? Were you ungodly then? Were you not a Christian then? Were you destined for hell then? No, it's oh, a part of your growth process. Content. It's a part of your growth process. You learned and you, and, and, and one of the challenges of learning is being able to consider the possibility that you're wrong. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to matters like homosexuality, the, the theology, the bad theology, the anti-gay theology is so dug into the fabric of the Western church that we no longer even think it's possible that we're wrong. And we don't think it to the extent that we call somebody who disagrees, not on Jesus Christ and him crucified, not on Je Jesus, was Jesus raised from the dead? Not this, does his blood still work? No, do you disagree about homosexuality? And on that topic, we'll assert that somebody is not born again, on it's that topic, we'll God. assert somebody is not. Uh, so the blood work. I thought it reaches to the lowest valley. The blood works except against homosexuality. Even if we were to agree that homosexuality is a sin, we blood. cannot then assert the idea that it's it's a greater sin than the blood of Christ to save people. Now the let's blood not when you repent. <clears throat> okay. What what you say, Marcus? The blood works when you repent. If a Muslim is going to be a Muslim, they got to follow the text of the Quran. How is it that we, we're going to sit here and say we're Christians, but we don't need to follow the text? Repent the Bible, of what? The Bible is Repent clear. Of what? The, Bible clear, the Bible was clear that it was vow. The, uh, the Bible talks about that it's not natural. We read all the verses. You're, you're throwing, oh, that's not what it really means. It's so clear. It doesn't, it doesn't say that nowhere about same sex, but it makes a clear point to say that about same sex, not the, the opposite sex. It's so clear, so many verses. And you're saying all of these verses, multiple verses that's not what it really means if i'm gonna be a devout muslim i have to follow the quran you're pretty much essentially saying that i'm a christian but i don't gotta follow the text that's what you're saying that's now check this out hold on hold on guys <laughs>